If you've been looking for the perfect scheduling software for your coaching, consulting, or service-based business, or any other business for that matter, and you're not yet convinced that Calendly is the right option for you, you are in the right place because I thought exactly the same thing. So I thought I would create a video where I break down for you why I ultimately did not decide to go with Calendly for my own coaching business, the lesser known alternative that I discovered, and how some of these features in this alternative have actually changed my life and business for the better, beyond what I thought possible. Now, in case you're thinking, uh, yeah, but isn't all scheduling software basically the same thing? Like you just choose the time on a calendar and book a call, yeah? Well, yes and no. The purpose of scheduling software is very much the same, but the way that the companies are going about creating this whole experience can differ greatly, as we are going to see in a second. And so this means that your life and the life of the person booking that call or session with you is going to be impacted by your choice in software. And so as someone who has been on the negative receiving end of choosing the wrong software, trust me when I say it is important that you really consider this decision carefully. So I'm glad you're here watching this video because that's what I'm trying to help with. Before we dive into the details of this alternative software I found, let's take a really quick look at Calendly and how it basically works so that we're all on the same page and you can actually do a side-by-side -side comparison and decide for yourself which one is best for you. So to create a new event in Calendly, we're just gonna click new event type. We've got one-on-one -on -one group, collective round robin. The main ones obviously are one-on-one -on -one or group. So we're just gonna select that, select me as the host, give the event a name. You can give it a color if you really want. Choose a duration. So I'm gonna say 60 minutes. Keep in mind, so you've got to choose one meeting length here. And then the location, I'm just going to say in-person meeting. One, two, three, happy Av update, continue. And then we're going to see a bunch of other options. The one I wanna really focus on is scheduling settings because this is where you're gonna see that the alternative I discovered is very different. We're gonna set up our scheduling settings and so that means what's our availability? When do we wanna accept these calls? And so the standard would be to select, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, that works for me, nine till five. Okay, fine. But if then I am needing to make changes to specific days that sort of fall outside of this range, I'm gonna have to use the calendar of you and I'm going to come in for instance and select this day and say actually I don't want to work that day but I do want to work this day. Now I don't know about you but I'm not actually someone who wants to have the same availability for every different kind of call type in a week because I might be doing discovery calls talking to potential clients which is one style of call but then my coaching calls or consulting calls are a different style and I'm in a bit of a different headspace for those so I need different availabilities for these different kinds of things. And I personally have found that this kind of manual setting of your availability on the back end can be very time consuming. And anytime you want to adjust it, you have to go back in and click all these buttons. And then you can't actually remember what you set. Like you don't have an easy visual to say, like to sit back and go, oh, okay, this is my availability for all these different kinds of calls. There is no one stop shop for that. Keep this in mind because this is very relevant to the alternative software I'm about to introduce you to. Then just quickly, the experience on the scheduler's end is really straightforward. This is where you've probably experienced this at some point by booking through someone else's. You just you see the dates, you select the date you want, select a time, next, pop in your details, schedule event, that's it. Bob's your uncle. No real surprises here. And you might have booked a call on Calendly before and you're like, yeah, yeah, I know all this, but it works fine, right? And it's like, well, yeah, it does work fine. But what if we're all fine with it because we've never been introduced to anything different, anything better? Enter the alternative that I have been teasing you about, Savvy Cal. I really wanna keep this video as short as possible. So rather than walking you through every feature that Savvy Cal has to offer, which plenty of them are going to be really similar to Calendly, I thought what's gonna be more helpful is if I just highlight the things that really are quite different to Calendly and especially the things that I've noticed have made a major difference to my life. First thing that I noticed and loved about Savvy Cal was just how much 
flexibility you have when you are creating scheduling links, which is the same as event types. So you can choose what type this is. So they've also got one-on-one, -on -one, round robin and group. You can decide whether it's multi-use or single use. So automatically single uses will get archived after the call has been used, which can be really helpful. Also, you've got multiple duration options that you can actually select that you want 45 minutes, an hour, and then maybe even a custom time option. Let's call it 75 minutes. And when someone is actually booking this call, they will be able to select how long that call is, which might be really handy for you. Okay, but this is where Savvy Cal gets really fancy. So we're gonna have a look at the availability. You'll see that there are recurring ranges as an option, which is just like Calendly and pretty straightforward, but where you just don't have a huge amount of flexibility. Time blocks though, is where my life was changed forever. What you can do is mark yourself available when you have a calendar event with a particular name. That means I can log into my Google Calendar and just create events, give them a name like calls and that is going to mean that these times are marked as available in Savvy Cal automatically. Remember what I was saying, if I've got a different day this week to that week, it does not matter. I'm just gonna keep managing my time through my Google Calendar as I do with everything else. And because I spend most of my time in Google Calendar arranging my schedule, this is just so much more intuitive and has saved me hours every month. This also means that last minute, if you realize, oh, I need to take the day off, I don't wanna do this day, or I need to change the time, you just quickly either delete that block or you move it on your calendar, and that's it. It's that quick and you can do it on the fly without having to log into another software. Just a quick disclaimer before we go on, this video isn't sponsored by Savvy Cal. I made it of my own accord because I'm a genuine super fan. However, there is an affiliate link below because if you use my special code, you'll get a free month if you choose to sign up for Savvy Cal. So it's there if you'd like it, but otherwise let's just carry on with the video. The customization and control does not end there because you also have your schedule options. So the simple schedule is what I kind of just showed you. So you could just create one preset that is going to sort of determine the availability for whatever appointments it's attached to. We've then got ranked schedules, which means you could actually have a couple of presets that you use and you rank them in order. But then optimized is like the ultimate, this <laughs> is the epic option where we can choose one preset for availability. So I've just got my default calls, meeting spacing, so we can decide if we want to just have that off or have them clustered. So that's going to make sure it presents the times to group appointments together. So you optimize your time. And then we've got preference as well for time of day. You might have that whole day available technically, but you want to encourage people to book in the morning because you would rather book out mornings for meetings. So even though you're not sort of locking down your whole calendar, which is going to then mess up your ability to take bookings, you can try and sort of nudge people in the right direction that is going to give you your ideal week without looking like a total control freak, which I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes that can be an issue. Now let's have a look at the scheduler's experience because this is another huge point of difference. Already you can see that rather than a list of times, I'm actually looking at a calendar and it's that white space that tells me what's available but let's get one step cooler and we're gonna to toggle on overlay my calendar. I can now see my actual calendar and what I have on that week and therefore choose a time that is not going to clash. When you are booking with a scheduling software like Calendly, you are cross-referencing jumping between your calendar and then back to those available times to try and figure it out. This for me is just so much more intuitive, quick and simple and reduces the risk of double booking. One other minor difference worth mentioning is that while Calendly has GoToMeeting, WebEx and Teams as native integrations for video conferencing, you've got Whereby, which is a different video conferencing platform available on Savvy Cal as well as Squadcast. Also, Savvy Cal has a direct integration with ConvertKit where Calendly directly integrates with MailChimp meaning you can send those person's details straight to that particular software and potentially trigger a whole automation or an email sequence based on the appointment that they've booked. But both softwares will allow you to use Zapier if you need to integrate with any other kind of software. So you're not really limited. It's just that I know for me as a ConvertKit user, having that direct integration just saves a few extra steps and saves some time naturally. 
Now the final difference you probably want to know about is the pricing, which is very fair. And I will say that I think the comparison is pretty similar here. However, there are a few details I just want to point out, including the fact that we've got free plans with both softwares. You'll see with Calendly, there is just one meeting type that you can have to do that. Pretty much all the features you're going to want though are going to exist in the standard plan and above. With the standard for Calendly, you are going to be able to accept payments through PayPal and Stripe for your appointments. However, you'll see that not all event types are actually available on the standard plan. So basically we've got free, 12 a month, 20 a month for everything that you would need. But let's flip over to Savvy Cal. So the free plan on Savvy Cal really is for testing things out. It's going to give you some features, but to actually publish events and use them for real, you are going to need to be on a paid plan. That is worth keeping in mind. With their basic plan, you get just about everything that you need. So you've got unlimited scheduling links and pretty much all of the features that I've been talking about today. However, you don't get the Stripe integration unless you go to a premium plan. For transparency's sake, I'm actually on the basic plan Plan because I accept payment through Thrivecard. I've got my own checkout software, so I only need the actual scheduling feature for Savvy Cow. If you don't have that set up for yourself though, you would want the premium plan in order to take payment for these appointments. Now, this is the point where you might be going, oh, this is a lot to spend on a software. I'm not actually that busy. Do I really need a scheduling software at this point? And this is where I need to put my coaching hat on and say, trust me. An investment in a scheduling software, no matter what stage of business you're at, is going to potentially have some of the biggest ROI for you because of your ability to control your calendar, to set boundaries, to look so much more professional, and to not have to have all the back and forth and awkwardness when you're trying to play email tennis to schedule appointments with clients or potential clients. So for me, if it saves me a couple of hours a month, I mean, the year's payment is paid for already in that one month of time saved. But back to you, if you are trying to make this decision for yourself, here is what I'd boil it all down to. Scheduling software is meant to save you time and give you more control over your calendar. In my opinion, Savvy Cal beats Calendly hands down in both of these departments. Also, I do happen to have a code for you. If you wanted to try Savvy Cal out, if you use CAT, K-A-T, you will get one month free. And on top of that, you have got a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can just take it for a spin without any risk. So really the way I see it is why not just try it for yourself and see if you enjoy it. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions at all about Savvy Cal or the way that I'm using it in my business, please just leave me a comment below and I am an open book. Plus, I'm really happy to do a follow-up video on this if there are any sort of features or things like that you want me to dive into further. Thanks for watching and see you soon.